Hey guys, today we're not going to go to a historic site. We're going to a prehistoric site. What's the difference? A prehistoric site is a site which goes back to the time where there was no writing or any other form of historical record. So we're going to a site that's at least 5,000 years old. Prehistoric sites are very old, very rare, and are extremely hard to find. We're going to a deep forest area known as Javadu Hills in South India. This forest is protected by the government. The Javadu Hills are known for its lack of facilities. But even before I began the journey in the surrounding, there are no hotels or restaurants, but the village women cook delicious food and sell them on the street, and people are extremely friendly and helpful. Local stories are always fascinating to hear. When we enter the Javadu Hills, we can see the difference. Outside, we see heavily populated villages, but this forest is almost completely uninhabited. You can see how it looks outside the reserve forest, and you can see how it looks inside the protected area. Why is such a large area protected by the government? Is there some mystery hidden from us? The paved roads end after a certain point and there are only small dirt roads. They're too narrow for my car. So I borrowed a motorcycle because I need to use these roads for many miles before reaching the bottom of the hill. Nobody is allowed to settle and build homes in this forest area. There are only a few hundred tribal people who live here on forest resources. For a casual visitor, it is nothing but trees and hills. Or is it? The bike will only take you so far and you must be prepared to walk for several miles through the woods. The Javadu Hills are known for its exotic herbs. People affected with lung diseases come here to breathe this herb-filled air. I have been walking for more than two hours now and our prehistoric site is at the very top of a hill. I'm walking through rocky areas which have some crazy slopes. If I'm careless, the fall from here can be deadly. And finally, there is a steep climb to reach the top of the hill. I am literally in the middle of nowhere and completely surrounded by the jungle on all four sides. The angle of the slope makes it almost impossible to climb. There's not a single person who has visited the site in the last six months, except the tribes who come here in search of honey. But what's on top is simply mind-boggling. On top, there are hundreds of strange stone structures strewn all around the hilltop. They're all made of stones, which are bright white in color. The first one I saw was made of very small stones. A lot of stones were used to create a cave-like structure. It looks like a cave for dwarfs or little people. This is why this area is referred to as Kular Caves, which means caves of the dwarfs. There's nothing inside the structure and no traces or signs of anything. When I explored the hilltop, I found another type of structure. Unlike the other structure, these are not made of smaller stones. They're built using large stone slabs. They look like miniature stone huts. But the main catch is this. 
all these stone huts are only two feet tall. It is almost impossible for human beings to go inside these stone huts. Archaeologists call these structures as dolmens. What's a dolmen? A dolmen is typically made of four stone slabs, three slabs on three different sides, and one slab on top as a ceiling. Who built these structures and why? If you examine these structures from the aerial point of view, you find something fascinating. They also have a base, an outer circle made of smaller stones. These dolmens have an outer wall. Rocks are stacked neatly around to form a circular structure which forms a base as well as an outer stone fence. I need to examine inside these dolmens. They could have valuable rock art or markings which may give clues as to why these structures were really built. But these structures are too small for me to go in. Or are they? I am going to try and go in. It would be impossible to go in in this angle especially with my backpack. So I had to enter in a different angle. I have to be very careful not to touch anything. If I make sudden movements or kick a stone accidentally, the entire structure may collapse on me. But inside the dolmen, there is no rock art, no symbol scratch, just the walls of what seems like a room for very small people. It is a fascinating feeling to be inside a prehistoric dolmen, being unable to move. But the question is this, what could be the reason for all of this? Who built these tiny stone huts? Exactly how tall were these beings? I measured these structures and they are less than three feet wide about two feet tall. Almost all stone huts are of similar sizes, but when I examined the area, I found yet another interesting feature. Some of them have circular holes cut out on the walls. These holes are almost perfectly circular. This one has a diameter of 13.5 inches. What was the purpose of these holes? The mystery has just begun, and there is something fascinating about these holes. These holes always face east. Why? Is it somehow related to the sun or even astronomy? Are these structures somehow connected to the stars and planets? Who is going to explain this mystery? Luckily, some tribal men have come here to gather honey. I have always maintained that local stories, the folklore, are based on some truth. Here's the conversation. In the area, what's your name? Waliyapare. 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 Why are you here? I'm here. 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 வாலியர் <laughs> 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 I'm astonished at his story of little beings building these dolmens on an isolated hilltop. Two years ago, I had visited a site called Hire Benacle, which is more than 300 miles from this place. I documented that site, which also has dolmens and cairns on top of an isolated hill. 
what is shocking is not just the similarity of the structures you see, but listen to the story of a villager who lives near Hire Binnacle. Moria rente meaning, uh, you know, Moria rente smala. Moria. This is extraordinary because this villager also tells us the exact same story. Little beings building dolmens on an isolated hilltop. The only difference is the name. Here, the villager calls them Moriar, but in Javadu Hills, the tribes call them as Valyu. How can such completely isolated areas, which even speak different languages, tell us the exact same story, unless it is based on truth? Is it possible that a race of tiny human-like beings existed in prehistoric times? Do archaeologists and historians have any solid explanation about who built these structures and why? Mainstream archaeologists claim that dolmens are basically burial sites of early human beings. They believe that human beings who lived here about 5,000 years ago would bury their dead and build a dolmen on top of it. However, here's the problem. No bones or skeletons were ever found in the site. Even in Hire Benacle, no human remains were found. In fact, in a vast majority of dolmens found in India, there is absolutely no evidence that these were used as burial sites. But let us entertain the idea that these dolmens are in fact burial sites. There are hundreds of dolmens and cairns. The whole area is extremely big, as big as a modern-day cemetery. Today, we have cemeteries or burial grounds in every town, but they occupy less than 1% of the town's area. What does this mean? If prehistoric men had such a large burial site, then there must have been thousands of people living in this area. Where are their homes? Why do we not find evidences, the remains of their homes, their families, anywhere nearby? Let us assume they lived in caves because they were cavemen. Where are the caves? Human beings leave evidences of burnt animal bodies, their flintstones, and even stone spears. Where are they? If there was a human population which was in the thousands, we should have found plenty of evidences of their existence. But nothing has been found. In fact, nowadays, some archaeologists have come forward and agreed that they actually do not know why these dolmens were built. Modern archaeologists are even beginning to reject the idea that these are burial chambers, as there is no evidence for this. Some archaeologists have completely accepted that they have no idea about these structures. Look at this on Wikipedia. It remains unclear when, why, and by whom the earliest dolmens were made. But there is yet another reason why prehistoric men could not have created these dolmens. Look at the slabs of rocks. These rocks have been quarried from a different place, transported here, and have clearly been chiseled to make them into thin stone slabs. These slabs are not rough, they are smooth. Even if we somehow assume that the stone slabs were found naturally, to make circular holes like this, we absolutely need sophisticated metal tools. Without metal tools, it would be impossible to do this. So the technology to make metals must have also existed. 
the argument that prehistoric men had enough technology to cut, quarry, and chisel these stones, but yet did not even know how to build mud huts to live in, is simply ridiculous. Many people think of history as a solid science filled with facts, but the reality is that history is built on very shaky grounds. When we delve into prehistory, we realize that we know nothing about the history of mankind. Look at the development of our race as human beings. If we believe in evolution, Homo sapiens came into existence about 200,000 years ago. But what we read about the history of mankind only goes back to 5,000 years ago because there is no documentation about the rest of the 195,000 years of human existence. This means 97% of human history is lost, yet we claim to understand everything about the history of mankind. Tribes who live here laugh at this idea that this was done by early humans. They believe that it is impossible for human beings to transport and lift these large stones which weigh in tons. The conversation reveals something incredible at the end. <laughs> மனுஷன் <laughs> 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 As you can see, during the conversation, I realized that these people not only believe that there were little beings, but these tribes say they're not human, but gods. Even today, they worship them as gods. Who are these gods? Where did they come from? How did they look? The tribes here believe that Valyur were not human beings, but a race called Nagas, which came from the sky. According to locals, these Nagas arrived when human beings were living in caves, and they set up a kingdom in this region called Naga Nadu. They even claimed that Nagas taught them the ancient language of Tamil. When I researched this, I found out there are other researchers like Alex Collier who confirms that Tamil language was perhaps the oldest language communicated by extraterrestrials to human beings. At one time, we all spoke the same language on the planet. And the last time we all spoke the same language, the language was the Tamil language of India. That was the one language we all spoke. But we got too powerful. Remember the movie Stargate? You guys seen the movie Stargate? Yes. The people came together, rebelled against the gods. There's so much truth in that movie, you have no idea. <laughs> so much. What is also interesting is that the term Naganadu, the kingdom of Nagas, is not a mere folklore. The oldest Tamil texts, like Silapadigaram, confirm the existence of such a kingdom ruled by Nagas. The ancient texts describe the Nagas as a race which looked reptilian, had supernatural abilities, including flight and preferred to live isolated from human beings in remote areas. And this isolation is the key difference between historic and prehistoric sites. Historic structures such as ancient temples are built 
where we have plenty of access to resources, water, agricultural land, usually located in plains. Prehistoric structures are built in places which are complete opposites of locations like this. Why? Think about it. Today, in modern world, getting to this place requires a solid three hours. Why did anyone construct these structures here? Let us go back in time, thousands of years back, and you are living in prehistoric times. If you become a leader of a group of people and wanted to build anything, you would choose a place that is easy to access. You would choose a place which would have agricultural land or animals which you could hunt to eat. Or you would choose a place which at least had some trees which will give you fruits. You would never, I mean never choose a place like this. This is an impossible location in the middle of nowhere. But we do see that many of the prehistoric sites are impossible structures set up in impossible locations. Remember Sigiriya in Sri Lanka? I showed you the ruins on top of a gigantic rock. This is also a very old structure dating back thousands of years. As we go further in time, we realize that builders chose extremely remote, inaccessible sites. The question is, why? The answer is this. The builders of these structures did not want human interference. They did not want human beings to access these locations. They wanted to remain aloof. Perhaps they did some secret things. This is why they chose this area. It is a hilltop completely surrounded by the jungle on all four sides. Who are these Nagas? Did they really exist in prehistoric times? Where can I find more evidence of them? The tribes told me I could find more evidence of Nagas if I could locate a gigantic but split rock within a hundred mile radius. This means I would have to begin searching again. While coming downhill in a wooded area, I saw that the tribes had primitive means of worshipping these Nagas by erecting several stone slabs in series. How are the Nagas linked to human beings? Can they reveal the secrets of the real human history? Were they really reptilians who came from the sky? The search for the giant spot rock could be an exciting journey. Will it yield more results? Will it be a smooth journey or does it involve rough paths? Hey guys, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will talk to you soon with a completely different video. Bye.